Strategies for engaging e-learning experiences. E-learning is a new norm for most of the students and teachers and even parents in the world right now, as we are all affected by the pandemic. Many people consider this new norm as obstacles. May I invite you to look at it as opportunities instead. In another word, a blessing in disguise for the children who have special learning needs, whom I prefer to view them as children who learn differently. One of the greatest discoveries we have through the e-learning is to have an insight into our students' home learning environment. An opportunity that we do not have normally, but now we have to understand and learn about the communication style they have with their parents, caregivers, or even siblings at home that have impacted their desire and motivation to learn. When we first started Breakthrough e-learning in March 2020, we experienced struggles and challenges in supporting our children online. I wonder if you are also experiencing the same struggle like us. Are some of the students or your children fidgeting and losing their focus and uh, rubbing their eyes constantly, closing their ears? Or maybe some display behavior such as hide and seek and kept turning their camera on and off. And some flatly refused to join the Zoom online class. We have many of them. So I shared this with my children during our family conversation. My 70 years old eldest daughter said, Mom, your specialist children are doing so well. My lecturer in the college is giving up on us as some of my classmates are serving other side when attending e-learning class. My lecturer just gave a slide for revision. So, parents and teachers, this seems to be a norm for online classes for typical and even those who learn differently. Now, for teachers who are listening here, I would like to bring your attention to yourself, noticing in your body as you are teaching the e-learning. Do some parts of your body feel tense like your neck, your shoulder, your hands or even your eyes? Do you feel disappointed and stressed? What are your thoughts when you're teaching the e-learning? One of my teachers felt helpless when the child just cried and turned off the camera during the session and she felt that she can't do anything to support. How about parents here who are listening, who witness your children not engaging at all during e-learning or serving are uh, going to the different side while Zoom classes is on top and then the bottom is something that they like to do. When you see those sides, do some parts of your body feel tense? Or are you breathing or holding your breath? Do you feel disappointed and stressed? What are your thoughts at that moment? One of the parents sent me a text saying that she's so upset and embarrassed that her child was lying on the floor. And this is a waste of money and time to be on the Zoom. Do you know all this information that we gather from our body, our emotion and our mind tell us what is our state of being present or are we feeling stressed? And when we feel stressed, the amygdala in our brain is hijacked. It's a part of our brain that helps us to regulate our fight and flight response. Our body may freeze or frozen, or we may choose to avoid, ignore that it's being in a flight mode, or we may react while solving the problem and like dealing with it that is in a fight mode. In another words, when we are stressed, 
we may fall into the trap of doing the following don't that will have much side effect and cause conflict in the psychosocial development of our children in the future. So what are the three don't? Don't number one, do not expect our students or our children go beyond their abilities. When they can't do what was instructed, don't get upset with them because our expectation may cause stress to both our students as well as to us. Don't number two, don't solve the problem immediately. We may use quick fixes if it is a problem, such as to offer reward, extra screen time or ice cream for completing the e-learning session. Don't do that. Or sometimes parents who may be present and get upset over the behavior, set punishment, having a cane by the side. These are quick fixes that trap and have side effect in the future. Don't solve the problem. Number three, don't. Parents and teachers, when you see things that you do not feel good, you may feel stressed. Remember, don't say words that have element of shaming, threatening, or even causing our students to feel miserable and not motivated. It is not going to help them to enjoy the e-learning. So, then what can we do? Can we change the phenomenon? Is there anything we can do differently in our e-learning? Or can we just let our children do what they like? Let me invite you to see what Albert Einstein said about learning. Learning is experience. Everything else is information. My late beloved mentor, Cecilia Coester stated in her Brain Gym for Special Education Providers Manual, and I quote, To learn and remember something, there must be sensory input, personal emotional connection, and movement. Now, this is not easy to achieve for e-learning, but yet, yes, personal emotional connection with our students is the key to a successful e-learning experience. When we develop personal emotion connection with our students, we will be able to discover the reason behind the student cues and body languages and understand the state of learning ability in a company. Therefore, what would the three do's be? Let me share with you our breakthrough approach that we have been applying and seeing great results. These three do's have allowed our students to show significant progress and our facilitators feel more at ease, our parents to feel more help, hopeful during our second conditional movement control on it. The number one do, let's begin by paying attention to ourselves, to yourself as a teacher and parent. How does the new norm affect you? Especially when you put in so much effort in preparing the slide and going all the way out of your comfort zone in teaching online, but yet your students are not responding the way you would like to see, or your child is not enjoying the e-learning as what you hope for. So, number one do is please respect your own needs and do help yourself to regulate when you feel stressed. How do you know you're stressed? You can notice your body, how it sense, is there any discomfort, how you feel, and what is your thought. When you realize that there are some stress, there's one best way is to take a sip of water and do some deep breathing. Right now, I would like to invite you to do a movement-based learning technique. Let me introduce you to skull tapping first. Then I will show you the technique and you may do it together with me. Skull tapping is an alternate tapping done on the face using fingers to provide an organized stimulation of the nerves in the head around your eyes, 
your ears, your mouth, that promotes a sense of rhythm, timing and flow within the brain-body system. When we are stressed, our bodies are tense. So doing a sound tapping helps us to relax and be able to organize. Let me show you now. You may watch or do it together with me. With two fingers at the side, between your corner of your eyes and your ear, you may do a tapping at the pressure and the pace that you feel comfortable. Going up above the eyebrow, back to the temper, from temper to the eyebrow to the crown, back to the eyebrow to the temper, under the eyes, back to the temper, to the TMJ, back to the temper, through the TMJ to your upper lips, back through the TMJ to the temper, through the TMJ to your leader of your chin, back to the TMJ to the temper, and go behind your ears to the occipital region, back to the mastroid bone to the temper. Now, gently massage your ear from top to bottom, and we repeat it three times. And we end with a gentle pull horizontally and down as you breathe it out. I'd like to invite you to notice yourself right now. Is there any difference on your face and your whole body? Some participants felt that they feel more relaxed and alert. However, I do have other participants that say that they don't like it. That's okay. It's just one of the techniques. You may explore other ways to help yourself to regulate. So remember, do number one, take some time to pause, to respect your own need for a timeout before addressing the situation. Number two, do is to consider applying the seven E's in e-learning in supporting both the student and the children and the parents at home. The E number one, empathy. When we empathize with the parents, our students and ourselves on their struggle to cope with this new norm, we can be more relaxed and we can assist them in coping with their struggle much calmer. So when the child keeps rubbing the eyes, if you look at it, that what is the child telling me at this moment? Is his eyes feeling discomfort, staring on the screen for too long? If a child is closing the ears, is he telling me that the noise is overwhelming? And that's what happened to one of the students. When he refused to come to the school, using a heart of empathy, we create conversation and discover that it was because the room was too noisy and he couldn't bear with it. And therefore, we could teach him how to lower down the volume. Second E is exercise. Paul Dennison, the founder of Brain Gym, once said, movement-based learning calls for a highly structured intentional movement that helps to grow the brain. A child who is fidgeting and not able to focus, we may get them to do spinning and that is movement, but yet in brain gym and movement-based learning, the movements are very intentional to help to reset the neurological readiness of a person. So therefore, constantly inviting the children to do this movement helps them with this movement break, helps them in the midst of this e-learning, uh, it's a great way for them to be reconnected with their brain and body system. The third E is encouragement. Constantly using language to encourage ourselves, our parents, and even our students. We can only encourage when we are calm and relaxed. Do you know that Dr. Albert Merabians, once in his research, says that there is this personal element of communication with 7, 38, and 55 rules. It gives us an insight of the way we communicate. 7% of the way we communicate is through the words we use. 38% are our tone and our voice. 
And yet, do you know what are the 55% that the way we communicate, that our children pick up, is our body language. So therefore, the way we communicate has an effect on our students' neurological system. It means that we can either inhibit, block, or enhance the ability to listen and use the information we present. Therefore, when our language, either verbally or body language, is encouraging, this will encourage our students to be connected with us. And then they will be the one to learn. The mirror neuron in their brain is also reflecting on what they have seen in us. So remember, encouragement is just very short, kind words. And yet with a pleasant person body language, it makes a great difference. Number four is engage. Once our students develop personal emotional connection with us, the next step is to ensure that our lesson is engaging, meeting the learning needs of our students. You may refer to Dr. Howard Garner's theory of multiple intelligences. Sometimes it can be difficult for our students to be engaged throughout the full session. However, it would be important for us as a teacher to understand our student learning style and incorporate that in our lesson. On top of that, to encourage them when we acknowledge and affirm them of their willingness to participate. Children love to be acknowledged in front of others. When they have the opportunity to be engaged, to demonstrate their work on, in front of the screen, and to be able to express their thoughts, they can show you what they can do. Number 5E is empowerment. At Breakthrough, we embrace the seven learning steps throughout the e-learning. For example, when the lesson is about preparing a snack, the facilitator will invite the student to do the brain dream pace as learning readiness or a simple drinking water and skull tapping. Then we will introduce a lesson and a new vocabulary involved to the student. Thirdly, the third step is that the facilitator will demonstrate how to carry out the lesson for the day before sending the student in the breakout room to practice in a smaller group according to their learning ability. What did we do? We get the brain ready. We give the instruction for those auditory learners. We demonstrate the lesson for the visual learner. And we invite them to the breakout room for practice session for the kinesthetic learner. So through these steps, we achieve helping all children with the different learning style to learn that lesson. So when they are in the breakout room, some students are empowered to copy down the lesson at their level of ability. Those who can copy, they write down the ingredient and then they request the parents to purchase the raw material for the lesson. These are opportunities for them to be independent and to be confident. Students are also constantly guided to do the movement break whenever they feel stressed or overwhelmed while in the breakout room. The assigned facilitator will guide the student according to their learning style. All the students will return to the main hall to share their experience. All the facilitator will share what they notice to acknowledge the student's level of participation. And this reinforces the learning for the day. Now the sixth E, is about our communication with the parents. Exchange conversation to set up workable strategy through our video reviewing session. Many of our parents appreciate this process as they notice their children's ability when being guided using the breakthrough approach with tree play. Most of the parents notice their children's strength and challenges when they are not stressed. That means just reviewing the video. This is a precious moment to guide the parents by reviewing the video together. 
In order to facilitate the session more objectively, the Breakthrough Academy has developed online step-by-step -step observation form based on the level of prompting required by the child. And then how do we measure the student's competency together with the parents periodically? Last but not least, E, number seven E, is endure long enough to break through. All learning happens when we have the abilities to create patterns. The first time when our children join the e-learning, it is not an easy task because it is not a pattern yet. They are not able to predict what is coming out of the e-learning. However, parents and facilitators notice that the children seem to break through quicker through the above collaborative processes and especially when parents who participated in the weekly parent support group discussion. So yes, parents, it is important for us to look into this 7 E and working in a collaborative manner. So the second doom is a long list, but yet it's achievable. How about the third doom? Number three is to make learning relevant. In applying what Albert Einstein and Cecilia Coester said, breakthroughs core learning is through our weekly emotional regulation process, allowing the children to express and identify their emotion for the day. Functioning numbers that they learn that they can use it in the daily life. Grips it oral communication, they learn to communicate and express them with words. Cook up play for them to learn how to make simple snack or lunch for themselves and their family. Double do the play, drawing with both hands to stimulate our brain for better and easy learning. And character building activities, not forgetting vision circle, an activity to stimulate our eyes as well as our play developmental process. I hope to encourage teachers here to pursue further with the techniques that we mentioned just now, such as movement-based learning or brain gym workshops that is available. You are invited to have a glimpse of our breakthrough adaptive activities shared during the IC2020. And I hope that this sharing is useful for you as teacher to consider ways to refrain from the three don'ts and apply to three do's with 7E in e-learning and you will notice that teaching e-learning is much easier and enjoyable process. And you may also improve your teaching method to meet your student e-learning process. As parents, I would like to encourage you to consider to work very closely with your teachers and the therapies and find ways to encourage your child by making the learning relevant in his daily living activity. So with this, I wish you well. Thank you.